What up YouTube, Salvador Brigman here, and today we are talking about equity crowdfunding. So equity crowdfunding, meaning if you're trying to raise money for a startup company, you're trying to raise money using equity crowdfunding, maybe to, to scale a business, rather than like with Kickstarter, where you're doing a sort of pre-order for a product that doesn't yet exist, with equity crowdfunding, you're gaining access to a bunch of investors who at the end of this process, at the end of this campaign, will own a part, a small Small part of your company so they're vested in you they're going to become advocates for your brand and you're also going to get all that money then you can use and plow back into the company and fuel its expansion and its growth so before we get into this video I just have to say that if you're thinking that this video is a hundred percent accurate or that I am a legal attorney or that I am a, a tax consultant or that I'm an accountant sorry to burst your bubble that is not the case um, I view myself as an educator as someone who likes to break down complex topics so I'm really doing this for you to sort of put this into layman's terms and it's very easy to understand how to do an equity crowdfunding raise but don't think of this advice as tax advice as legal counsel anything like that it is not. You should search out your own attorney. You should search out your own accountant. You should search out your own counsel when doing one of these kinds of equity crowdfunding offerings. So now that we've gotten that out of the way and so that I'm not sued in the future, let's talk about the three major types of equity crowdfunding. So the first type is known as Regulation A+. Now, those that are in the industry that are very f uh, familiar with like this terminology, you're kind of throwing it around in layman's terms, people usually call this a Reg A+, offering. It's, it's usually referred to as Regulation A+, though it could also be referred to as Regulation A. So to, to bring you a little bit of the history here, basically, Regulation A already existed before the JOBS Act, but what the JOBS Act did was it reformed a lot of the, the laws and the ramifications around that. So this new sort of superset of rules which you can raise funding under is called Regulation A+. And that's actually under Title IV of the JOBS Act. So if you want to look out into this, this is Title IV of the JOBS Act, Regulation A+. So in this first type of raise, there are two tiers that you can do an offering under. Under tier one, a tier one offering, you can raise upwards of $20 million in a 12 month period. So you can use this to get funding for a startup, you can use this to fuel the expansion and scale an existing business. You can raise upwards of $20 million from the crowd in a 12 month period. And you can also raise this from both accredited and non-accredited investors. So that sounds great, right? Like why would not everyone do a tier one offering? Well, there's one sort of downside to doing a tier one regulation A plus offering and that is, when you do a tier one offering, you also have to comply with the blue sky laws, it's called, of every single state where your investors are. So these blue sky laws basically are state by state filing requirements that you have to keep in mind when you're doing one of these raises. So if you have an investor who's in Minnesota and also an investor who's in Massachusetts, there are different requirements depending on the state and you have to be mindful of that and take that into account. So it's a very onerous reporting requirements in that way, very onerous filing requirements. So that's actually one of the reasons why people love tier two regulation A plus offerings. So there's tier one and tier two. Under a tier two offering, you can raise upwards of $50 million in a 12 month period. So you can raise a lot more than a tier one offering. But what are some of the, the, the other things that are included in that? So yes, you can raise money from both accredited and non-accredited investors under a tier two offering. And the great thing about a tier two offering is you can actually preempt the blue sky laws for every state. So like you don't have to be worried like, oh, one investor is in this state, another investor is in that state. You have to be mindful of these filing requirements. You don't have to worry about that when you're doing a tier two regulation A plus offering, which is actually why so many companies have sort of taken to that style of offering. Many companies have done very successful tier two offerings, um, both for startups and also real estate crowdfunding. So some of the major platforms out there like Fundrise or Realty Mogul, they've actually used regulation A plus of the Jobs Act, specifically a tier two offering 
to raise upwards of $50 million for an e-REIT. They have different styles of e-REITs out there and they'll use this money and then go out there and invest in real estate properties and they'll make this real estate crowdfunding offering available to both accredited and non-accredited investors. So I'm not gonna be talking too much about real estate crowdfunding in this video. If you are interested in real estate crowdfunding, I have a really good comprehensive book out there called Real Estate Crowdfunding Explained where you can learn a little bit more about that. So when it comes to a Regulation A plus offering, a tier two offering um, specifically, one of the really cool things about this, and to me is sort of like a hallmark of a Regulation A plus offering, is the test the waters period. So the test the waters period, this is something that you can do if you're looking to do one of these offerings. A test the waters period is where you basically say, hey, I wanna engage the interest of investors or how people might be interested in, if, if I do one of these offerings, like are there a lot of people out there that are interested in investing in my company? You can do a, a test the waters period and gather what's called non-binding indications of interest. So a non-binding indication of interest is basically you share this test the waters campaign on social media, on Facebook or something like that, and people can indicate whether or not they would be interested in your company if you were to do a Regulation A plus raise. So the cool thing about this is it's a little bit of lead gen, but also it's also gauging demand. So if you spend all that money actually putting in the legal counsel, the audited financials that go into a Regulation A plus raise, and honestly, that can be anywhere from $30,000 to $80,000, all of those costs sum up. So it's really important to know that there is demand for this type of raise. So the hallmark of a Regulation A plus offering is you have that test the waters period. So to sort of summarize here, uh, Regulation A+, plus, you can raise $20 million under Tier 1, you can raise $50 million in a 12-month period uh, under Tier 2, you can raise from both accredited and non-accredited investors. Depending on which tier you go with, you might have to follow the blue, state, blue sky laws of the states. Uh, you might have to have state-by-state -state filing requirements. If you go with a Tier 2 offering, you can preempt that. And also, under both of these, you can do a test the waters period. The major downside for a Regulation A plus offering, quite frankly, is just that it's very costly. It's very onerous uh, requirements. You need audited financials. You really need to know what you're doing and have people on your team that are surrounding you. So if you wanna learn more about like service providers in the industry and also what you need to do legally going into one of these offerings, I will be putting out some more videos on that, but I'll also be linking to something down below that has a ton more information on that, which I'll mention in a little bit. So the second type of offering, the second type of equity crowdfunding offering, if you're trying to raise money from both uh, accredited or non-accredited investors, you're trying to raise money from the crowd. The second type of offering is called a Regulation D offering or Reg D. So Regulation D offering is sort of how traditionally before the Jobs Act and before like you know crowdfunding became a thing, many people would raise money under a Regulation D offering in order to get funding from angel investors. Angel investors is just kind of like a fancy word for accredited investors. I'm trying to give you a little bit of terminology here so that when you go out and talk to people, they're gonna be using like sophisticated terminology like an offering. An offering is just simply the crowdfunding campaign. You're offering securities to the public. Typically like that word offering is used a little bit more under Regulation D than if you're doing something like like a regulation crowdfunding style campaign. So anyway, suffice it to say, Regulation D, you have two types of offerings. You have 506B and 506C offerings. So 506B offering is what was traditionally used before the JOBS Act came about. It's what you can use to raise money from accredited investors and up to about 35 non-accredited investors. The main thing when it comes to a Regulation D offering when you're doing 506B is you actually have to know these people. You have to have direct contact with these investors. You, know, you have to um, basically know the person that you're telling this offering about, that you're educating them about like what you're doing, you have to know that person is an accredited investor. So you, it doesn't really allow for any kind of like general um, advertisement or general marketing when it comes to the actual offering. So that's really one of the downsides of a 506B offering. Now there's also 
a 506C offering. And it's very similar to a 506B offering. And you can raise money from uh, accredited investors and up to about 35 non-accredited investors. There's no cap on the amount of money that you can raise. So it sounds pretty good. The only doubt, the only thing that's like a little different I would say would be that under a 506C offering, you can actually advertise this offering to the public. You can go out there and you can tell people, hey, I'm raising money with this crowdfunding campaign. So this is kind of like the start of, I would say, new age rules when it comes to doing a crowdfunding campaign online or doing an offering online. So under a 506C offering, you can go out there and you what's called, you can have general solicitation. You can solicit um, investment from people that you don't directly know one-on-one. -on -one. So you don't know necessarily that person is an accredited investor, but you can, you can solicit um, general interest in your offering. Now the only, the only other thing you have to do here is under a 506C, you actually have to verify that these individuals who decide to invest in your company, that they are accredited investors. That's really important that you do that. That's part of the um, complying with these regulations for a Regulation D offering. So aside from a Regulation A plus and a Regulation D offering, there's a third style of equity crowdfunding that I wanna talk about in this video. And this is actually the type of equity crowdfunding that's gotten so much hype in the recent years. There's been so many news stories about it. There's been so many people that have just been enthusiastic about this style of crowdfunding. And that is doing an equity crowdfunding campaign under Regulation Crowdfunding, Regulation CF, or a Title III campaign. Those three terms, Title III, Regulation CF, and Regulation Crowdfunding, all mean the same thing. You're basically doing a funding campaign under Title III of the JOBS Act. This is a, a new style of crowdfunding offering, a new style of campaign where you can basically raise money from non-accredited and accredited investors. These are retail investors. You meet someone at a party, they can be an investor in your startup company. And this is very different than the other types of equity crowdfunding. So with Regulation A+, Yes, you can raise money from both non-accredited and accredited investors, but it's very onerous reporting requirements. You also need audited financials. Under a Regulation D offering, you can only raise money from accredited investors and up to 35 non-accredited investors, or really only like your friends and family maybe. Under a Title III or a Regulation crowdfunding campaign, you can raise money from everyone. It really opens the doors in that way to crowdfunders who are interested in these different campaigns and interested in investing in the next Uber, the next Facebook, you know, whatever it is, the, the next new hot startup, the next Airbnb, they can actually gain access to these styles of investments. Now with a, with a regulation crowdfunding campaign, you can raise upwards of dollars in a 12 month period. And also if you, if you do have more like, you want more of the, the details here when it comes to the numbers, I can also link to another blog post down below that goes through a lot of this legal terminology and jargon, but you would say, you know, just round numbers here, you can raise upwards of about a million dollars in a 12 month period. And that, that's the, the upper cap when it comes to one of these crowdfunding campaigns. So that kind of, it does give you a sense of who might use this kind of a funding mechanism. You're not gonna have a, a company that needs $20 million in funding go with a, a Title III crowdfunding campaign. Only companies that are raising $1 million or under. So this is really startup companies, could be even seed stage companies, could be companies using that money to maybe fuel and accelerate development. And they're also maybe doing the crowdfunding campaign as a bit to get general interest in their company. So these are types of projects that we're gonna see more and more with Title III crowdfunding campaigns. And also the rules might change as we go. We really don't know here. Some of the other things that you should know about a regulation crowdfunding campaign, depending on the amount you raise under regulation crowdfunding, it's going to have different stipulations for you as the company doing the offering. So let's just say round numbers here, uh, about $100,000 and under, you're going to need things like, you're going to need uh, tax forms, you're going to need to have your accounting looked over by an accountant, et cetera. And I, I do have more information there. It goes pretty much by the amount of money that you're raising. There are sort of different requirements there. 
and, and depending on whether or not you have audited financial statements, that might also change up the requirements that you have as a company going into one of these raises. So I will link, as I said, to that blog post down below with a little bit more nitty gritty information when it comes to doing one of these Title III raises. The other thing about a Title III raise is that um, I think a hallmark of the sort of these newer regulations and laws is that you can actually advertise the public crowdfunding campaign. So you can actually go out there and you can say, we are raising money for our company. Now there are those some caveats. There are some limitations that go into what you can actually say when you're doing a Title III uh, regulation crowdfunding raise. So those, you can think of it as those come in the form of, you can basically share tombstone information. Tombstone information meaning you can share information like we are doing a crowdfunding raise on this platform. And then people can go and they can check out that intermediary platform in order to learn more about the actual funding campaign that you're conducting. You can't do anything like go into the very nitty gritty details of how much you're offering or the terms of the offering and these different things. That is not allowed right now when it comes to generous solicitation under regulation crowdfunding. Now these rules, again, they might change in the future, we don't know, but that's how it is at least now at the time I'm recording this video. So you have to be aware of that. While yes, you can have anyone out there invest in your regulation crowdfunding campaign and you can broadcast this on social media, you can do advertisements, you can gain interest that way, you can really become a viral success story. At the same time, there are some requirements there when it comes to the advertising and actually setting up the campaign. And also, there are annual reporting requirements for these companies that do one of these types of equity crowdfunding offerings. So as you can see, there's a lot of like terminology when it comes to an equity crowdfunding campaign a lot of new terminology if you are an entrepreneur in the audience. Um, it really pays to have some people that you know that are familiar with equity crowdfunding, a lawyer maybe who's done an offering before, or an accountant who is familiar with the process of, of doing an offering to the public. I think that's really going to help. Uh, and finally, it pays a lot to have access to the right information. So it actually brings me to something new that I'm going to be doing this year. So there's been a lot of interest in my own, uh, in my own following at least, of, in terms of equity crowdfunding and really more digestible information. Like you can go out there, you can read very dense legal information about crowdfunding, but I mean more of like layman's terms, like people that you and me understand and I can tell you exactly how to do one of these raises, how do you get investors, how do you build a crowd, what are the major platforms out there, what are the different regulations depending on the, the companies, the sponsors, what are the regulations on the investors, like how much money can they invest, um, all this kind of stuff, we can sum this up and we can distill this into much more bite-sized format. So that brings me to, I'm putting together this comprehensive guide on equity crowdfunding and I would love for you to be a part of it. So this guide is gonna walk you through how to do an equity crowdfunding campaign. It's gonna talk about what do you need to know if you're trying to do one of these offerings? What do investors need wanna know? You know, how much money can you actually invest in one of these companies? Um, and also the, the requirements for a platform. If you wanna start your own equity crowdfunding platform or you wanna do an offering on your own website, it's also going to talk about that. So I'm gonna link you down below this video for a list where you can basically express your interest in, yeah, I wanna know when this guide comes out, Sal. Let me know when this guide comes out. I'll be sure to shoot you an email the second that I go live with this comprehensive guide on equity crowdfunding. I also think I'm probably gonna be um, sharing some more training and some more videos leading up to that guide, or maybe even after I publish the guide, um, just to continue to educate and help about this whole new financial tool. So I hope that that is going to be helpful for you and it goes a little bit more in depth than just sort of the broad surface level um, explanations that we went through today. So if you are interested, go and check out that link in the description of this YouTube video if you wanna learn more about equity crowdfunding. But I hope this gives you like a surface level idea here. There are pros and cons that are associated with every single type of crowdfunding out there. There are benefits and drawbacks. Um, depending on the type that you go with, you might be able to only raise a certain amount of money as we've talked about. You might have to undergo certain reporting requirements. You might need audited financials. These are all going to weigh on your decision when going into one of these raises. So I hope that this video helped you out.